Hello! In this video I want to show you how to create a simple first person character controller in Godot. We are going to create a simple scene and a character that can run around and jump. Let's start with a quick overview of the project. Our project will contain two folders, one for player and one for the levels. We have two scenes, one containing the level map and a linked player node and the other one for player. Player has a camera attached to it, collision shape and the geometry visualizer, just a capsule to make it more visible in our editor. Player has a script on it that looks like this. We set up several parameters such as acceleration and friction and gravity and jump power. They are pretty self-explanatory. We have a function called aim that allows our character to look around in the world and a function called walk that accepts the keyboard inputs and allows him to move around and also a jump function. All of these functions are run by the physics process and executed every frame. Finally, we have a ready function that captures the mouse and input function that captures all of the mouse movements. Very well, without further ado, let's get started. We begin with an empty project. Let's first create the folders that are going to contain our player and our levels. A new folder named player, new folder named levels and inside of the levels folder we want to create a folder called meshes that will contain our level geometry. You can use your own level model or you can download the level files by following the link in the description of this video. After you have downloaded the files, put them inside of the meshes folder, just copy and paste and Godot will import all of the assets automatically. Now inside of the meshes you have a file called prototype that contains the level our character is going to be running around in. Let's create a new 3D scene for our level. We are going to call it world and simply drag the prototype level into the outliner so that it is created automatically. This file already has collision geometry attached to it. If you were going to import one of your own models, you could simply select the geometry of your level and under the mesh button, you would click create trimesh static body and it would automatically generate collisions out of your model. Let's save our level inside of the levels folder. We will call it map01. And now it's time to create a player scene. You create a new scene, click on the plus icon to create kinematic body. Kinematic body is a node that will be the root of our player and it is going to handle all of the movement logic. By the way, just to explain things to you, there are multiple different physics bodies. There are static bodies that are used for level geometry. This is the geometry that does move during the game gameplay, but other physics bodies can interact with it and collide with it. Rigid body is for physics driven objects such as bouncing balls or anything that is driven by forces. And kinematic body, the one that we are using, is specifically designed to be controlled by the player. So as we uh, press keys or, or move around our mouse, kinematic body will be moving around and yet it will still be able to interact with rigid bodies and static bodies. That is exactly what we want. Let's rename it to player and save the player scene inside of the player folder. As you can see, this node shows a warning about the missing collision shape. So let's create it. Collision shape will contain collision geometry. It displays a warning telling us that right now the collision geometry is missing and to create it, we go to shape and create a new capsule shape. Now we need to position our collision shape. First, let's click on the capsule shape and we are going to set its radius to be 0.5. That way our player is going to be one unit wide and two units tall. Let's move it into the upright position. When you hold control and rotate the object, it automatically turns on the snapping that you can see in the lower left corner of the screen. We rotate it 90 degrees and we move it up again while holding control to snap it to the floor. You can also obviously enter these values inside of the transform parameters over here. We are moving it one unit up and 90 degrees or around X axis. That is our collision shape. Let's also create a visualizer geometry to make it easier to see and select our player inside of the scene. We are going to create mesh instance, name it visualizer, create a capsule mesh and set the same settings as we did with the collision geometry. 0.5 radius moved into the right position. Now we need to add a head node to the player. It is going to be a spatial node that we name head and underneath it. So while it is selected, we also create camera. And let's move the head up so that it is in a correct position, like so. The reason we need the head node is that it is going to be responsible for rotating the character 
around the y-axis. It will allow us to look around horizontally. And camera is going to be moving around vertically. Now that we have a basic player scene, we can link it into the level. Click the link button to import the player inside of the scene. Now all of the changes to the scene are going to be reflected in, in the player node. We can position it however we want. Let's run our game for the first time and Godot will prompt us to select the default level that is going to be open whenever we run the game. We are going to select the level we have created. Now we are staring at the world through our character's eyes. Because we have added a camera to the player node, it is automatically used as the default camera inside of the level. The next step is to add a script to the player so that we could write some code. Click on the add script button. The script will be automatically named player and placed inside of the player folder. And we will select a template called no comments so that we do not have to delete the comments manually. We call create. And now we are ready to write some code. First, we are going to need to create some variables. I will just copy paste the code so that you do not have to watch me type. These variables will control acceleration, friction, gravity, jump power and mouse sensitivity. That's pretty self-explanatory. Each variable has an export keyword before it. That allows us to access these variables through the player node. When I click on player, here in the inspector we can see and modify the variables we have just created. Which is extremely convenient. I have fed these variables to the default values that seemed reasonable to me when I was experimenting with this project. Next, we will need convenient access to the head and camera nodes. To do that, we create two unready variables. Unready means that this variable will be assigned after the player and uh, the scene has been created. We are using dollar selector that selects the nodes relative to the player because this script at is attached to the player node. So we have a head node and a camera node. Finally, we need to declare variables that are going to hold our current velocity and the change in mouse position that is going to be useful when we are trying to get our player to look around. We are going to create input function that runs whenever there is any input from mouse or keyboard. And whenever we are moving our mouse, this function will set the relative mouse position, that is the changes in mouse position relative to the previous one, into the mouse position change variable that we have just created. The next step is to write aim function that will allow the player to look around. First of all, pay attention to these two lines. These are the important lines that rotate the head and the camera nodes. So this line takes the head node and rotates it around the Y axis according to the changes in mouse position around the X axis. So whenever we move mouse horizontally, the head node will be rotated to the degree that the mouse position has changed multiplied by mouse sensitivity. And here we, we use a function that turns degrees to radians because the rotate Y function accepts the radians as an input. Here we do the same thing for the camera node. Whenever we move mouse vertically, we are going to rotate camera around the x-axis and our player will be able to look up and down. After we have successfully rotated the player according to the mouse position, we want to reset the mouse position change back to zero. And this line will make sure that this function runs only when there have been some changes to the mouse position. So whenever mouse moves, input sets the mouse position change variable. This line sees that the mouse position has indeed changed, rotates head, rotates camera, resets posi mouse position back to zero, at the next frame, mass position is zero, so this function sees that mass position has not changed and uh, quits the function. Finally, we need to create a physics process node that will run the aim function every frame of the game. Let's try running our game and see how it looks like. We are moving our mouse and our character is looking around. But we have a couple of issues. First of all, we see mouse cursor around the screen, which is not what we want. We want the mouse cursor to be invisible and only controlling the player's direction. And also if we move the mouse too far horizontally or vertically, our player's head is going to get upside down because we are rotating the camera around the X axis too far. We want to prevent that as well. Let's fix these issues. First, we are going to create a ready function. This function runs whenever the node is created. So it's going to run only once at the beginning of the game. And we tell Godot to capture the mouse. It will make the mouse visible, which is what we want. We also want to be able to release the mouse whenever we press the escape button. So inside of the input function, we tell Godot that whenever we press the UI console, that is escape, we release the mouse. Now if we run the game, the mouse is invisible. And if we press escape, the mouse cursor is visible again. Finally, to solve our rotation problem, I'm going to uncomment this line. And it is going to limit the rotation around the X axis to negative 60 degrees and positive 60 degrees. So the clamp function takes the current rotation and makes sure that it is no less than negative 60 degrees and no higher than positive 60 degrees. Now, regardless of how far I move my mouse, the vertical head rotation is limited. Beautiful.
Now let's handle the player's movement. First we are going to need to set up the key map. Go to project, settings and inside of the input map we will create the actions that we want our player to be able to take such as movement forward, backward etc. And then we assign the keys to them. So let's create move forward, press enter to create it, move backward, move left, move right and jump. Here we click on plus icon next to the action, select the key and press the key that we want to, contro to be controlling this action. W for forward, S, A, D, and space for jump. So let's create walk function. It looks pretty long, but it is not that scary. And I will take you through line by line and you will understand what's going on. The first thing that we need to do is to get access to the rotation of the head. To do that, we take our head node, run get global transform, and take the basis out of the global transform. So what is basis? Well, basis contains the rotation information that we are going to need. Because we want our movement to be relative to the head's rotation, such as if we are moving forward, we want to move in the direction where the head is pointing at, and when we are moving to the left or to the right, we want uh, to move uh, to the left or, or to the right, again relative to the direction where head is pointing. So this basis contains three vectors. Each of them points in the direction that its axis has been rotated. So they effectively describe the node's total rotation. What does it mean? The easy way to visualize basis is to simply look at the movement arrows. So we have our head node, basis contains three vectors that describe directions of each of the arrows. Important thing to note that if we will rotate the head around like so, and I'm going to click over here to uh, use local space, our arrows are going to be rotated along with the head. And that's how basis is going to function as well. So when we want to move forward in the direction where the head is pointing at, we are going to simply be moving in the direction of negative z axis. One thing that you need to know is that in Godot, objects pointing forward are actually pointing down the negative z axis. It is a bit strange, but uh, that's just how things work. So to move forward, we will want to move along the negative z axis. When we want to move right, we will want to move along the x axis or left are along the negative x axis. And that's going to move our character in the direction that we want. Great. So this is the basis three vectors, each containing three numbers describing the position of the arrow. Now we are going to create a variable that holds our move direction. So based on which keys are pressed, it's going to change a vector that is pointing where we want our character to be walking towards. Now uh, we simply handle the inputs. So we have defined move forward, move back, move left and move right. And whenever a player presses one of these keys, we are going to change the move direction to move in the corresponding direction. So here head rotation contains again the basis of the head transform. And as I've said before, when we want to, the character to move uh, in the direction where the head is pointing at, we are going to move it along the Z axis. And because of the quirkiness of Godot, we need to move it in the opposite direction. So we need to move it down the negative Z, Z axis. When we move back, we move the character down the positive Z axis. To move to the left or to the right, we move the character along the X axis. Finally, we need to normalize the move direction vector. Normalizing vector simply means setting its length to 1. What we want is for move direction to simply be an arrow pointing where we want our player to move. And its arrow will have the length of one unit, so that it doesn't affect the speed. Sometimes if the player presses two buttons at once, for example, moving forward and moving to the right, both of these vectors will be added to the move direction, and the move direction vector will end up being longer than we need to. So normalized resets its length to one, but maintains its direction. And that's really all we need to move. Now we simply accelerate our character in the direction that we want to move towards. So we have our velocity that will control, well, the velocity of the character. We take the move direction and since its length is 1, we need to multiply it by acceleration. That is uh, the speed at which our character is going to be moving. And we also need to multiply it by delta. Delta will be supplied to this function by the physics process. And what it means is that delta is uh, the time between uh, the two frames. So because uh, different computers have different speeds and sometimes your computer may slow down, the number of FPS will change and the delta is also going to change. So multiplying acceleration by delta makes sure that the character will have the same speed on slow and on fast computers. So increasing our velocity will accelerate our character in the correct direction. And then we need to multiply velocity by friction to decelerate it. So that when you release the buttons, character gradually comes to a stop. And finally we add gravity. So we add a force that is pointing towards the ground. That is a, a just a gravity force multiplied by delta. Both acceleration and, and friction and gravity are all defined in these variables above. Once we have created the walk function, we need to make sure that it is run every frame inside of the physics process. 
one last thing we need to get our character to be able to walk is to apply the velocity we have created to the actual player node. There is a special Godot function called move and slide. It takes the velocity we want uh, the node to be moving towards and an up vector that is a, simply a vector pointing upwards and it is going to move our player according to the velocity we have defined. Finally, it outputs the updated velocity that we assign to our current velocity so that in case our character is sliding down the slope or bumping into the wall, our velocity will be updated to the correct one. So let's run our game and see what happens. Hooray, we can move around. Fantastic. We have one little issue though. Let's say we are running up the slope and we want to stop at the slope, like so. Oh no, we are sliding down. That's not what we want. To prevent this behavior, we need to pass a couple more arguments to the move and slide function. The important thing is to turn this flag to true and this is going to tell move and slide basically to stop on slopes. And 4 is the maximum slide amount. That is some technical thing that we don't need to worry about right now. So let's run the game again. And now even though we have a tiny tiny amount of sliding, overall it works great. There are more technical ways to prevent this tiny amount of sliding but they are out of scope of this video. The important thing is that we can run up the slope and stop on it. Excellent. As I have been testing the game, I have noticed that my backward movement wasn't working and that was because I named the, the backward action move backward, not move back. So that's a typo, we change it to move backwards and now our character moves in every direction. Fantastic. Finally, we want to add a jump function and it is very easy. We create a function called jump, it checks if player has just pressed the action jump and it also makes sure that the player is on floor. Is on floor is a special Godot function that does exactly what it says it does. It checks if player is contacting the floor. And if we are on floor and can jump, we simply add the jump power, so some number, to the y velocity that will propel our player upwards. And in order to execute this function, don't forget to add it to the physics process. Let's run the game. We we can jump. We can move around, we can jump, and we have our very simple character controller, which is absolutely awesome. I hope you have found this video useful. You can download the final scene by following the link in the description. And I'll see you in my future videos.